Now, anybody who follows football, soccer in particular, will know that for decades now there has been overt racism in the stadiums, very occasionally on the pitch. One thinks immediately of the final of the Euro Championships in England last year when some of the black English players were subjected to the most vile racism. It is a curse. I used to think that it was a problem in society that was manifest in soccer and therefore soccer there was very little soccer can do. Well, there's very little soccer has done and I don't hold that view anymore. I think now soccer has to get its act together and rid the game of racism or the kind of people who would be party to racist behaviour. And in Spain last weekend, a brilliant player, Vinicius Jr., a Brazilian, plays for Real Madrid. He scored a brilliant goal against Manchester City in the first leg of the Champions League semi-final, which many people who watch that game will never forget. He has been subjected for a long time now to the most appalling racism. It is not exclusive to Spain or indeed to any single country. But we're joined now from Barcelona by Richard Fitzpatrick, a journalist who lives and works in Spain and has done for a long time. Richard, thank you very much for joining us. Last Sunday, when they were playing away from home to Valencia in a legendary stadium, the Messiah, which is a very passionate place and a very famous stadium, he was subjected, Vinicius Jr., to the most appalling racism. It was terrible stuff. We've seen the images and it's deeply shocking. Can you explain to us precisely what happened and why this exhibition of racism was perhaps worse than many of the others? Yeah, it's it's, it's deeply, deeply disturbing. Him. Um, before the game started, um, the Real Madrid uh, team coach arrived at the stadium. Vinicius um, gets off the bus. There was hundreds of hundreds of Valencia fans uh, chanting racist abuse at him, saying, Vinicius, you're a monkey, making monkey chants at him like a stress. Not, well, not a few fans. This is hundreds of them. There's footage of it uh, online. Um, he, the guy goes into the stadium, talks out, runs out onto the pitch, um, plays the match. During the game, the, the the debating continued all around the stadium, in particular at the um, the south end of the stadium where most of the football hooligans were gathered. Um, at one stage, the TV cameras panned on him and they caught him. Uh, his tears were welling up in his eyes. We, we, can't, we can't imagine what this kind of level of abuse was, the impact it must have on the guy. And he's and a very big, young man, isn't he? Around 20 or something. Yeah, 22 years of age. Yes. This has been happening, as, as you suggest, in stadiums all over Spain all season. We've spoken about it before in Via the Lid in New York, uh, at Atletico. Um, last January, there was a, a, an effigy hung off a bridge by Real Madrid's uh, training ground with Vinicius' jersey on it, uh, echoing you know the, the lynchings that would have happened in the deep south in, in the States. Um, but b- back to the game, so... After about 70 minutes um, of the match, Vinicius had enough. He ran over behind um, Valencia's goal and he started pointing, singling out one of Valencia's fans. And he said, you, you. And then he turned to his teammates and he said, um, he was calling him a monkey. He st- started Im- Im- imitating the monkey gestures he was making. The referee came over. He tried to calm Vinicius down. He said, uh, look, we have to follow the protocol and we make an announcement over the stadium loudspeaker. If the abuse persists, we'll stop the match. So when an announcement was made threatening to suspend the game, uh, it was met with jeers and whistling by the Valencia fans. And the game continued. Bizarrely, in extra time, Vinicius was sent off and there was a big melee between both sets of um, players. Vinicius, or Vinicius was caught by the throat and he lashed out against a Valencia player. He got a red card for this incident. As he walked, uh, yeah, it was like, it was, yeah, 
deeply strange. So as he walked off the stadium and he was pulled up for this, we can chat about it afterwards, he, he made a gesture to the Valencia fans saying they would go down to the second division, gesturing with his fingers and their relegation and battles at the moment. Um, so he went, he, he went off, Real Madrid players trooped off at the end of the game. They'd lost 1-0. It was a dead rubber game for them. The league title has already been won by Barca. Um, but straight after the game, then Ancelotti was interviewed um, by a TV reporter. and it was, uh, Carlo Ancelotti, who is Madrid's hugely respected manager, great player in the past for Milan and the great coach who's won the European and the Champions League and the European Cup multiple times. Exactly. Um, and Ancelotti is a calm man by disposition, but he was incensed. Um, for three minutes, um, three, three, four minutes, he spoke with um, the interviewer. The interviewer wanted to talk to him about the football match, about another defeat for Real Madrid following the Man City exit in the Champions League. Ancelotti was adamant he didn't want to talk about football. He wanted to talk about the, the racist abuse Vinicius suffered. Uh, the interviewer, she reluctantly followed him into a discussion about the abuse and um, Ancelotti said, which he has been saying again and again all season, La Liga has a problem with racism. It won't face up to it. and The game should have been stopped. It's, it's very black and white um, in his view. Um, Vinicius shouldn't uh, suffer this um, level of, of, abu of abuse. But the reporter um tried to tackle him saying, well, what about Vinicius? You know, he insulted Valencia's fans as he was being sent off. And uh, Ancelotti said, there's no but. You know, it's, it's quite clear about that, obviously. But um, that hints at the, the kind of media reaction or the uh, the broader kind of approach to the, the racism that Vinicius has been experiencing in Spain's football stadiums. A lot of commentators and fans um, maintain that Vinicius draws it on himself, that he somehow um, um, has this coming to him kind of racist abuse. The chairman of La Liga got involved and he also verbally attacked Vinicius, really. Yeah. I believe he said that Vinicius yeah. Jr. didn't understand what racism was and he went on to lay the blame on Vinicius rather than on the racists on the terraces. Yeah, I and mean, this is just beyond um, bizarre. So later that night, um, uh, Vinicius released a statement, um, you know, d denouncing the racism he had experienced at the match, saying, you know, again, saying that Spain ha has a problem with, uh, or La Liga has a problem with um, racism, that Spain is a country of racists, that that, that is what people in Brazil believe. Um given his experiences and the experiences of compatriots. And I should have said he is a Brazilian yeah. and a Brazilian international. He's a brilliant player. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's the marquee player now in, in La Liga. Um, so he, he was, you know, um, referencing all the great Brazilian players, Roberto Carlos, Dani Alves, uh, all these guys have experienced brutal racism in, in um, Spain stadiums over the last 20 years um, so it's fo it's following a pattern but um, after this um, statement he made on social media um, Javier Tebas, the head of La Liga comes out all guns blazing trying to push Vinicius back in his box saying um, before you start slandering La Liga you better get your facts straight um, La Liga isn't racist um, it's an extraordinary outburst this from you know the chief of La Liga. There's no sense that um, uh, he should have apologised or that Vinicius was insulted. You know that he was the victim in this. It was more um, oh me me me. You know um, who's this guy um, calling out um, Spain and La Liga over over racism. Um, it was an extraordinary exchange that went backwards and forwards and. Um, it's left really bad taste in the mouth. Um, Javier Tebas has since apologised on Wednesday and in Thursday, and in particularly Thursday during a 90 minute um, press conference. But it, it's, it's the, the apology isn't full blooded. You know, he said he, he hasn't spoken with Vinicius. He 
speak with him in time and, and his agents. Um, but he, 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 Javier Tenas is a peculiar figure. He's um, a card carrying um, uh, uh, Vox Party supporter, Vox Party in Spain is the far right party. Yes. Um, which doubled its seats in the last election. They'll likely form a coalition government with uh, the Conservative Party here in the next general election, after the next general election. Um, so Javier Tebas' behaviour kind of echoes the kind of feeling around Spain that there's no you know, appetite amongst the authorities to really tackle um, to tackle the issue of racism. So that uh, has left people you know, worried commentators around the world about what's going to happen here. Other than Carlos Ancelotti, has anybody else in the game, the many respected figures in the game, his fellow players, coaches, prominent observers, journalists, how have, have they reacted? Has the media, for example, reacted by compounding this racism or by exposing it and criticising it? Yeah, the media's reaction was insightful. Um, their immediate response was, um, it was to, it, it, it definitely wasn't a, a defensive uh, Vinicius on Monday, Diario As, which would be one of the two main um, sports newspapers in Madrid, and usually a more considered um, editorial line. They were you know, focusing in on Vinicius again, saying that he, he provoked, you know, these uh, Valencia fans, you know, with his gesture about getting relegated to the second division. It was another ugly um, ed, um, gesture by Vinicius and this uh, ridiculous, ridiculous argument. In Valencia, um, again, and this would be typical uh, um, of, of the kind of reaction to these events in Spain, it was very regional, um, Super Deport, um, the Valencia sports paper on Tuesday had a front page story um, enough already. Um, Vinicius, it was saying, was a spoiled, uh, like a spoiled child, a brat. He deserved to be um, punished for his um, gesture. Um, there, was, there was no apology about the racism. Um, it, it was claiming that this was all a Madrid based campaign against the uh, region, against Valencia that it was a conspiracy, um, so there was no sense of um, uh, um, grievance or, or looking for, for an apology. Have the players' representative body spoken about this? There, there, no, it's been half-hearted. I need the support uh, for Vinicius from, from, from the, um, the players' body. The... Um, that some of the coaches have be, have rode in behind him. Javi Hernandez at Barca was very supportive on Monday. Um, he's Vinicius' own teammates um, yes. at um, Real Madrid. They threatened to walk off as well um, during the game on, on Sunday evening, but Ancelotti persuaded Vinicius not to walk off because he said, you know, you're the victim here. You don't have to um, take the hit for this the onus was on the Liga and the referee to call off the game. Um, there have been several precedents. Similar things happen, happening before. I remember um, Samuel Eto, a former Barca player. Yes. Um, he walked off in 2006 at Zaragoza Stadium um, uh, because of the racist abuse. Um, previous season, fans be thrown peanuts at him. Um, his players... Uh, Carlos Puyol and um, Ronaldinho, his coach at the time, persuaded him to go back onto the pitch. Um, so there was no um, stop in the match. Or um, a couple of a couple of years ago, the, the Valencia game was stopped. Um, Jacobi, a, um, a French-born black player who plays for Guinea, um, he walked off after he'd been allegedly racially racial abused by a Cadiz player. And um, the players walked off with him in support, the Valencia players, but um, they were warned that they would lose um, uh, the match points if they didn't return to the pitch. So they returned to the pitch. The player himself didn't return, um, whereas the player, the Cadiz player who, who um, allegedly racially abused him, stayed on the pitch, uh, which was, uh, was, was unfortunate to say the least. So 
We have in Ireland, Richard, several black players in our national team at the moment, certainly in the squad, and two, three, four of them may play at any given time. And we welcome it. There has been absolutely no racism in the Aviva Stadium or any other soccer stadium that I'm aware of. And increasingly, because of immigration, we will have first-generation Irish players who won't be white. I cherish it. We welcome it. It's, it's superb that this is happening. I do know France, and, and I've experienced racism in France, and it's vicious. Is Spain, in your view, I mean, you're in Barcelona, which is slightly different. I think all you guys in Barcelona think you're different from uh, the Spanish people. But, you know, is Spain a more racist country than Ireland? I mean, no country should be racist. For example, Zinedine Zidane was from Africa and African heritage anyway. He was a big hero in Madrid, for example. Yeah, I think the important thing here, or one of the important things is, and this is the way it's been explained to me by experts, um, I've reported on this several times over the years since I've been here since 2010, um, they they all talk about this situation, racism. Um, So if if a team like Barca or Real Madrid has a black player, he'd be cherished, he's one of our own. Um, but if the opposition team has a black player, he's black, you know what. Um, yeah. they, they they try and get at him. They say, oh, it's all in the context of rivalry, football rivalry. You know, they'll say, like Barca, people in Barcelona will say, look, we're not racist. We we applauded Real Madrid's player, Laurie Cunningham, in 1980 when he came to the Camp Nou and gave an exhibition. Or the same thing happened at uh, Real Madrid's stadium, the Bernabeu. Ronaldinho in 2005, a black Brazilian player, yes. gave an exhibition. He was, he was got a standing ovation, and they they'll point to these kind of um, these gestures. But they, they, they their belief is: look, it's not um, it's not serious. We're just trying to get this guy off his game. Um, um, like it was very very telling um, in the Vinicius case last September. Um, he was racially abused at the Atletico Stadium in Madrid. Yes, fans similar exact same thing that happened to him at Valencia outside the stadium. Fans chanting at him. Then inside the stadium during the game, um, there was a hate crime reported passed to the public prosecution, um, and a judge then handed down his judgment in December. He said. Look, it only went on for a couple of seconds, and the uh, any abuse was happened in the context of a football rivalry, and there's no uh, punishment here. That is the the attitude and the approach that the authorities take to it here. Um, you know, they, they give they give uh, the football hooligans and uh, larger society um, a free pass. And it, it hurts me to say this after living 13 years in Spain, but you, you mentioned Ireland. Like yes. I've lived in other countries, Canada in particular, they have a fantastic, uh, tolerant attitude to, to races and stuff in and, and the States as well. Um, but the, the Spain does have a problem with racism. There's a permissiveness here. Like I spoke to Carlos Finas, he's a historian at the University of, of um, Barcelona. He said, um, and he, he's written several books on skinheads and hooligan culture in, in Spanish football. And he said, um, big problem in, in uh, f- uh, of race in football in Spain. But at least the guys in La Liga, you know, they're um, well known that there will be some kind of action taken if uh, the racist abuse is persistent. But he said, you, you want to go to the lower leagues, yes. you want to go to the underage um, pitches, yes. and you see the, the abuse that goes on there in the sidelines, and it's horrendous. And um, there's no appetite to tackle it. There's not a kind of um, calling out by your peers. Like like you, you kind of suggest in, in Ireland, it, far from perfect but you wouldn't see that at a at a local game so if, if, if the parent was on the sideline you know racial abusing racially abusing a player you, you'd imagine people would step in and, yes. and, and call that person out um, but there isn't that kind of um, level of consciousness here in Spain and it's to do with it's said repeatedly it's to do with a lack of education um, 
uh, as regards racism and, and the hurt it causes. It's also, Richard, that the lack of punishment. Big time. If yeah. something such as happened at the Messiah last week in Valencia happened, then first of all, the game should be called off. Yeah. Secondly, the home team should have the points deducted. Yeah. And that should be it. Yeah. What's disturbing about this story is the response of the president of La Liga, the lack of response from if they have what a players' union in, in Spain, and thirdly, the fact that the referee would give a red card to someone who had endured that for 90 minutes and that nobody takes responsibility. Exactly. Exactly. That's Javier Tebas, head of La Liga, washing his hands of it, saying, look, we report the hate crimes, our hats are tied, we pass it over to the public prosecutor. Ancelotti says uh, he was despondent after the game on Sunday. He said nothing's going to change. Yes. The, the reaction has to, um, has to be radical. Um, like you say, stadium closures, points yes. deducted, heavy fines. Uh, Valencia got a, f- a f- Fine of forty five thousand during the week. Um, yeah. They're appealing that that this one of their stands, the uh, Mario Kempa stand, would be closed for five games. Um, but the, yeah, the, the stadium should be shut. Like Vinicius himself, a very intelligent young man. Like he 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 called out Javier Tebas in this spat they had on um, social media on Sunday night. He said, uh, um, "What I want is." Action! I want punishments. I don't want any more hashtags. You know, yes. they, uh, all week uh, in the midweek La Liga games, um, both sets of uh, both sets of teams when they were playing a game, and the, the match officials came out behind a banner saying um, "races out of football, get out of the game." Um, Valencia played uh, Mallorca on Thursday evening, and this Jacoby, their um, French-born black. Um, defender who experienced that race, racist abuse in a match two years ago against Cadiz, he refused to take part in in this display. It's it's window dressing. Like yes. that won't you know, no. change attitudes. Okay, Richard, we're very grateful to you for joining us from Barcelona. And if I could just say, we should be in this country absolutely draconian if anybody introduces into our sport racism and thank God we haven't had it in this country and if we do ever get it the culprits should be dealt with swiftly and their association with football should be terminated and that applies to clubs as well as players. We're grateful to Richard Fitzpatrick. 